Good morning everybody um, and welcome back to my watch list. So today we'll be going through my Sunday weekly watch list as with every Sunday. Um, of course, um, at the moment, um, there isn't sort of as much as I'd like uh, for the last week. I know it was a bit of a shorter watch list and today there'll be a bit of a shorter watch list as well. Um, but hopefully the analysis I provide you will be of higher quality and will help you sort of catch some moves this week. Um, so for me, one of my biggest trades this week was the pound yen trade that I took um, and pound dollar. Um, and I'll be going through them as well. So hopefully you caught them. Um, so starting off, we're going to go through the Forex calendar on Forex Factory. If you don't really use Forex Factory, please use it. It's a great um, website for news events. Um, and data and sort of understand them fundamentals a little bit better um, and if on your phone um, I always use investing.com on my phone because Forest Factory they only have a website um, but let's get into the watch list let's get into the news and let's have a look through the video so starting off we have Monday we have a bank holiday in the UK and in the US um, so therefore we're gonna see maybe some consolidation some slow price um, in the pound and the dollar of course, these are two of our major currencies, and of course, our dollar is our most traded currency. So therefore, if the dollar is having a bank holiday, we could see a lack of volatility, a lack of liquidity, um, and therefore, it's not likely to sort of create any big opportunities. Um, for me, I don't usually trade Mondays anyway, unless there's a very, very high probability move, which is very rare, um, just because of the fact of on a Friday, what we have is we have all these big institutions, all the big funds, all the guys with the big amounts of money. They're coming out of the market um, because, of course, they have to be um, even at the end of the week. Um, so whether they're in profit or loss, they have to cut their trades. Um, and, of course, a lot of traders do that as well because we don't want to get into any gaps in the market, especially in these current market conditions. You don't want to end up being running 1%. Get to the Sunday open and then you've lost all your profit. Um, and as well as that, on a Sunday, um, I don't ever trade a Sunday just purely because the market's only just opened. It's hard to sort of prepare. So what I like to do is, personally, I like to let Sunday happen, um, reassess the markets on Monday um, evening. So let any trades or any sort of, um, if I have got any trades I've left over the weekend, um, which normally I had to remove most of my profit and move to break even, um, then obviously on the Monday I'll manage them. And then on Tuesday I'll look to sort of go over my watch list, look over any pairs that might not fit anymore. For example, the Australian dollar pairs I had last week, um, they were slightly off of my analysis and therefore I just took them out. Nothing to say the analysis was wrong, it's just of course the data um, is coming out from the news and various pieces of um, fundamentals. Um, and of course, just natural price action. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you'd like to and therefore it's not anything wrong with your analysis, it's just part of not lining up the way you'd like it. Um, and of course, there's nothing wrong with having a shorter watch list because what it means is is that you can have less pairs to sort of switch your focus on and you can focus on a couple of pairs. And as we always say, you only need a couple of great trades to make your week. So Tuesday, we have 10 p.m. Um, we have Gov Bank of Canada Governor uh, Polos speaking. Um, so that could be interesting to any um, indications on monetary policy. Um, on Tuesday, we also have um, New Zealand dollar. So we have the Royal Bank, Royal National Bank of New Zealand uh, financial stability report, which could be interesting because we, of course, we know there's a lot of instability in the market at the moment. Wednesday, 8.30 a.m., we have the Euro, so the ECB, European Central Bank President Lagarde is speaking. So once again, monetary policy. Um, Thursday, 28th, we have 2.30 a.m., the Australian dollar, so private capital expenditure quarter by quarter. Um, of course, this would likely be quite low um, in their negative numbers. Um, but of course, what, with this one, for those guys like myself who are in the UK, we wouldn't likely be up at this point, um, and therefore we have to just be careful of any Australian dollar trades we're in. Um, and then 1.30 p.m. on Thursday, we have the US dollar preliminary GDP quarter by quarter. Um, so, of course, possibly negative numbers there as well. And um, then Friday, we have 1.30, we have the CAD GDP monthly by monthly. Um, so, most likely negative numbers there as well. And then 4 p.m. Um, on Friday, so this will be the last day of the trading month. We do have the Fed Chair Powell speaking. So, this is Jerome Powell. Um, he's, of course, the chair of the uh, Fed, US Central Bank, um, and of course the end of the month could be interesting to see with their monthly candlesticks just about to close, giving us that indication for June, um, whether we could see a lot of volatility there, and we could see a bit of manipulation in the market, um, and we could see some big moves happen around 4 o'clock on Friday. Um, so that's all the news for this week, so nothing too major, um, but of course there is a few things that could sort of stimulate the market in different ways. So now let's get onto the watch list, um, and let's go through the watch list for this week. But as always, we're going to start off with our DXY, our dollar index, um, and we're not going to focus on the monthly too much because we're going to focus a lot on that on the next week. Um, so here we can just see on the weekly, 
same picture as the last few weeks okay and um, we just have this ascending trend line we've now obviously broken through then we faked out the top here but overall we are above the weekly 50 ma we're kind of just stalling around this level of liquidity right now so now what we just need to see is that clear indication of direction i've got a few pairs on my watch list that are bearish for the dollar and a few that are bullish for the dollar and that's the, the case of the dxy being sort of um, in between at the moment on the daily, we can just see that price has broken through this um, ascending trend line and we have made this low here. Um, so just here, made this new low. We've now we've retraced to an area of interest with the 50%. Um, so price is currently or was currently breaking through the daily 50 MA on Friday. However, this could just be a fake out and a retest of the 50 MA. So just sitting in between that 50% and that 61.8% um, fib levels and now we're expecting could expect a potential reverse to downside giving us that weak dollar so for example dollar swiss um, or dollar yen we might see weakness in on the four hour we do just have this um picture here so on i think it was thursday or friday i was just looking at this sort of um, descending channel uh, which normally we get a descending channel is going to be a bullish breakout which is exactly what we had here um, so i wasn't really looking at any trade in terms of the us dollar apart from pound usd which i was already in um, so we can just see we had this liquidity area here 50 percent fib and this day, four hour 50 ma so for me price has broken through Quite unconvincingly, we do have this big wick and price is just stalling within that. So now what I'd just be looking for is how price reacts to the next few days and do we get a break back below the 4 hour 50 or are we going to now see a potential move to the upside? Of course, you could plot a fib the other way. So from the swing low here to the high here, look for that fib retracement around the 23.6 and then you could look for this to move to the upside. Um, so you could also look at it that way. Um, but for me, I've just got more of a bearish opinion on the dollar just because of them higher time frames. So for the DXY, I am sort of just in between at the moment. It's good to not have a set bias all the time. You need to be flexible within the market um, and have that flow state mentality. Um, so next is gold, of course, another one we've been we always watch. So weekly, um, we can just see that we've got this weekly spinning top. So once again, indecision. And we found that the last few weeks, and I do tend to repeat myself on this, is that price is just stalling on this high of 1748.479. So price is decelerating, especially after last week we had that big bullish engulfing. So we've had that spinning top this week. Um, it's obviously appears to be stalling. So could we potentially get that reversal soon? That greystone doji still hasn't been broken, um, and now obviously price is just sort of stalling at this level so now we're just looking for that reversal and of course we are pretty overextended in terms of the weekly 50 ma as well so we want to see some sort of retracement on the daily we can just see um, that trend line that does become clear on the four hour but we have got this liquidity area where we are stalling we've actually had an even star now with a harami retracement which is what we like to see after that reversal candle a good thing to note guys when we get these reversals um candlestick formations do not just enter straight off of that look for that retracement and then get in it's kind of like impulse and correction but on just a few candlesticks and i think it will really help your trade this is something to take note of um, and we are above that daily 50 mate on the four hour you can just see we are creating this wedge so we have got these um higher lows and lower highs being formed price did break of course the counter trend line um or the long-term trend line and made that new low here then price has stalled since, um, but overall now we are making these lower highs and these higher lows. So we just want to clear breakout to either side. So we could break out in two ways. We could either break out to the upside, retest this level, and then come to the upside, creating that new high. On the other hand, what we could do is we could break back through the 4 hour 50, come to one of our sort of support levels, retrace, and then come to the downside. So we just have to, like I said, be flexible, not have one set bias. So gold, I do favor shorts on this. Um, however, we just have to be careful in the market. We do have this collection of doges and spinning tops, which does sort of signal that re uh, that reversal will possibly coming. Um, so next, um, we're not gonna look at oil just because of, like I said last few weeks, personally for me, I don't think oil is gonna help. Um, it's just sort of in limbo at the moment and with everything that went on with the contract rollover personally for me I just don't really find any value in it at the moment um, so let's jump into the actual watch list um, and let's have a look at some of the trades on our watch list firstly we've got CAD Swiss Frank so CAD Swiss Frank another one we pretty much talk about every week um, it's one that I do like to trade it's one of my um, sort of favoured pairs so we can just see on the weekly we've come impulsively down 
retrace with that um, sort of rising wedge um, and we're currently just below the 50 MA quite overextended which is why it's nice to get that retracement we're currently rejecting that 50% fib we have this gap that we of course created some liquidity in which we are rejecting time and time again that bearish engulfing um, then retrace by Sarami retracement um, price is now squeezed in between that low and all time low once again um, and now we're just looking for price obviously break back below that which has the retest um, and now we're looking for price to roll over to the downside on the daily, we have that head and shoulders formation that we spoke about last week. We didn't really see anything come out of that yet. Um, I say yet being the keyword. We did have this um, so bullish engulfing broke through the 450, created this little double top on the golden pocket. Then we had this inverted hammer or shoot and star. Um, so then we kind of broke back through this um, bearish engulfing. Not quite an even star in my eyes because I like to see the um, final candlestick larger um, to the first candlestick, so bearish engulfing bigger than the bullish. Um, then a spinning top rejection or retest the daily 50 mate and now we look to continue to break to the downside so onto the four hour on the four hour we can just see that price has created that counter trend line we've broken it created that head so now we've got its left shoulder head right shoulder then kind of created this double top so um it's kind of triple quadruple top potentially um but the main point here is is that i don't think there's any rice on this one but but the main point here is is that we're just looking for that of course break of that counter trend line which we've now got that retracement and break of the 50 may retested both of these now with that um, nice shooters star kind of stick on friday's close and now we're looking for this to continue in this week um so that looks really nice definitely one of the ones i'm looking at next is pound aussie another one that's featured on my watch nearly every week so another one that's featured on my watch nearly every week now um so on this weekly picture we can just see how impulsive price has been i called this after we had them collections of really strange spinning tops um, but now we broke for that weekly 15 May with that bearish engulfing, then retested with the shooting start. We've had another bearish week this week, so I'm just expecting this to carry on this momentum now. Um, and Pound Aussie, if you've traded it, you know it does tend to very carry, it does tend to carry momentum very, very well. Um, so on the daily, we can just see that impulse. So A, B, C, D. Now fulfilled that fib. So now we're looking for that next sort of stalling and then a retracement. However, we did get this shooting star. Um, or sort of, it's more like a doji in a sense, but shooting star um, rejection of this previous high low, and now looking for this just to continue to the downside. Um, of course, we do have all this area to run all the way down here, um, so another potentially 1100 pips. Um, so massive potential. This one's so why I always say it's good to just watch it, and one trade could potentially make your week on the four hour. We have just got kind of this smaller trend line that I was looking at, um, and you can see that we've had this bearish trend line within baked out with this golden pocket rejection then we kind of got this sort of inverted hammer then the shooting star break of the previous high low and now we've just seen that impulse to the downside um so it could be quite nice if we can try and find another entry and then um, jump into this trade to take you all the way to the downside um i'd actually been in pound usd and pound yen both on uh, by the end of the week so i wasn't looking at taking this um the initial setup i was looking at I actually got tagged out i think or would have got tagged out i didn't take it but it would have got tagged out and then um and then i think it would have probably took me back in and i would have ended up being around 40 bits profit i think it would have been um because remember it being around that previous high low um so now we're just going to jump on to pound jpy um so this is another pair that as you can see i had a nice trade in last week so for the last two weeks i think i've taken around 500 pips from this pair and this is what i mean 500 pips could be a really nice return for you um and of course on that funded account that could be quite a nice percent so on the weekly we can just see of course that sort of bearish impulse we trace that golden pocket and now we've just really seen that impulse in full swing um, and that's the importance of swing trading when you catch a move like this it does really make your week um, of course i had to find another entry because on the funded you do have to close the trades at the end of the week um, but i say that's part of trading you get them impulses correction if you get them right you can get in for another scaling each and every time so now obviously price is just currently above that previous high low however with that shoes and stuff through and it's kind of retracement i don't really think that's going to be too much of an issue um, and of course we are above uh, below the weekly 50 may on the daily and um, you can just see that bearish impulse we trace them to the 50 percent and now just sitting on some support here so that 130.662 and um, just previous support which we faked out from but i think we'll probably break this in the coming week um, so we are obviously below the daily 50 on the four hour you can just see the two trades that i took so i think last week obviously i got the trade here and this week wasn't really any different it was just a case of this um bullish correction then we had this um stalling around the golden pocket which is in line with some liquidity here 
um, and then we broke through the trend line, retraced. Um, so if I put a fib on this, it was something like this. I think it was around the 38.2 or maybe even the 50%. Um, if I just add my fibs in there. Yeah, so around the 38.2 slash 50%. Um, and then, of course, you can see that it then reached the minus 27% quite nicely. Of course, we've now extended, broke through that 4 hour 50 again, um, and then we retraced again. Um, I've got a scaling, as you can see on this. Um, so nice scaling there, really, really nice knife for entry. And now price is impulsively forward to the downside. I did close, I did have to close this on my funded account. However, on my personal account, which is obviously much smaller, um, it is still currently running in a nice profit at break even. Um, of course, the scaling that I've left, I don't really see this sort of gap in too far above. Um, and I think it's around sort of 40 pips at the moment. Um, so that's GBP JPY. Now we're going to go on to GBP USD. So really, really focus on the pound pairs, which is unusual for me. So I don't typically trade them as often. Um, but sometimes you do find that naturally one, say the pound USD, which is the major pairs moving, then you're going to find a few of the pound pairs are going to move with that because of the judged by that major. Um, and something's good to think about is them legs. So what we mean by them legs are, for example, GBP yen. Um, I'm looking at say pound USD short, um, but I'd also want to see USD JPY short. So what I'm saying here is, is that the pound is weak against the dollar, but the dollar is also weak against the yen, which overall means that the pound is weaker than the dollar. So therefore pound is weak, the yen is strong, and therefore pound yen makes perfect sense to short. Um, so maybe worth pausing that, writing that down. Um, and what you should do is with any pair you trade, just, so for example, say you've got Aussie dollar Swiss, um, you've got Aussie dollar weakness against the US dollar, but you've also got um, US dollar strength against the Swiss franc, then that means that you're looking at a weak Aussie dollar and a weak Swiss franc. Therefore, that's going to consolidate most likely. However, if you say are looking at Australian dollar Swiss, don't trade the Australian dollar Swiss, trade Aussie dollar short or USD Swiss long um, and then take it that way. Um, so sometimes you just trade the majors, sometimes you just use them to make your sort of minor pair. Um, so now looking at pound US dollar, we can see that bearish impulse, uh, bullish retracement, 61.8% reversal, and then that big reversal since that bearish engulfing and that Harami retracement. Um, and of course, below the weekly 50 daily, we've got that head and shoulders we spoke about last week. We then broke through the neckline, made this new low. We've now retraced to the 37.2. And then of course, we've now come to the downside or, or looking to come to the downside. It does it very impulsive at weekend. Um, and then on the four hour, so below the daily 50, on the four hour, you can just see, um, so where I got my trade was off of this, so lower high to lower low, 50% retracement, then broke through the four hour, retraced again, I think it was around the 38.2, retested that key level there, and then we come to the downside. So that was running at around um, 180 pips by a week, uh, by a sort of Friday close. Um, it's quite a nice trade there. Um, quite happy with that. Sort of these spinning tops, bearish and golfing. And then, of course, we come to the downside. So, not so much drawdown there either. Um, I think it was actually off of this later entry. Um, so, yeah, so that's quite a nice trade as well. And I'm looking to scale into that next week. And I've got this still running on my personal account. So, now let's continue with the rest of the watch list. So, uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. We've got that. Like the So, the Aussie dollar pen said, I'm not really trading. They've got similar setups. However, the four hours it is clean for me, so I don't have my entry criteria. So, bullish impulse to the downside, broke through that weekly 50, then bearish retracement to the 50%. Now we're just stalling around this level. Uh, we did get this bearish engulfing, and now we've had that retracement and not close above. So, therefore, this could just be a retracement, and now we could get them entries to the downside and below that weekly 50. So, on the daily, we can just see that price is stalling on that daily 50. However, we do have this break of the counter trend line. We've had this triple top formed. We have these lows formed here, um, and now we're just looking for price to kind of reverse from this liquidity area. So I'd like to see a break of the daily 50 and then come to the downside. I don't really think we'll break above here. Um, however, we're going to look at the four hour where we can consider both opportunities. So on the four hour, we do have this kind of nice um, channel that's formed. Um, so we've now had three touches of the top of the channel, which is interesting because that normally suggests that we could potentially roll over to the downside. Um, so what I'm looking for is either a break of the four hour 50 and a retracement to retest, and then we come down. Uh, which would be around 170 pips or and then obviously further after that we could potentially go further to the downside or the sort of second option is we break to the upside and bounce off that 4 hour 50 come up sort of meet these highs here then retrace retest this um, trend line and then break up to the upside i'd favor the short here um but of course if the uh, us dollar does become stronger 
uh, or sorry, does become weaker, then we could see New Zealand dollar, US dollar go to the upside. Interesting thing to note is that the DXY doesn't include the New Zealand dollar or the Australian dollar in its weighting, so therefore we can't always reference the DXY too much. However, we do understand that if the dollar is strong, then typically that would happen on New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar would become weak. Um, so that's New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Now we're going to move over to the three USD uh, major pairs. Um, so it's USD Swiss, USD CAD, and USD Yen. They're actually all in my watch list this week, um, so kind of a big end to the watch list um, so let's have a look through so this watch list has been dominated by the major pairs which has been quite interesting but of course we need the major pairs to then make the moves for the minor pairs um, so let's go on to usd cad on usd cad we know that we had that big oil incident the other week with the rollover in contracts so personally for me i think usd cad still is lagging behind we should realistically see a big move to the upside um, and we're going to kind of look at how we could possibly see that here. So in the weekly, so in the weekly, we can just see prices stalling after the bullish impulse. Um, it's very overextended compared to the weekly 50 May, so that's might be why it is kind of consolidating or stalling. On the daily, you can just see from um, higher low to higher high, we have now got its 50% retracement. You can see price was interacting with the daily 50. It did break below, but it's now broken back above. Um, so potentially for me, I do think we could kind of see a move here. Um, but however, it was very, very bearish towards the end of last week with the bearish engulfing, so we could also see the opposite happen. Um, but I'm sort of just focusing on them sort of lower or higher time frames, but we will consider the shorts as well. Um, of course, if USD CAD um, is lagging behind oil, we could see huge moves to the upside to revisit highs, which goes with our GBP USD and NZD USD shorts. Um, so on the four hour, so just on the four hour, we can just see that we're kind of in this wedge or triangle. So we've got this support level here, providing obviously support. Uh, so bounce, price is bouncing um, and using that as a price floor. Then we've got this dynamic resistance in terms of this trend line. Um, and what we're just seeing is prices now sort of used an RBO style potentially. Um, so that means that we've broken through the four hour 50 MA, made this new high. We trace looking at the 38.2 and the 50 MA and then looking for this to now continue to the upside. You can just see that the target regions are in line with previous highs. The 27% here and 61.8 in line with the previous one before that. Um, however, if we do say break back below this, we could then see a break of the support and we could come to the downside sooner than that other opportunity. So that's US dollar CAD. Next is US dollar Swiss, another one that's featured in my watch list for a few weeks. Um, so here you can just see we've got this wedge, very messy price actually. So the only thing is here, because it is very messy, this might not really be part of your sort of risk appetite. However, um, the smaller time frames do look a little bit nicer. So price impulsively broke through the weekly 50 MA, made its new low and now retraced and obviously sitting within this golden pocket. Um, and then what we've seen is price is just stalling and creating all these wicks to the upside. So for me, I do think shorts are coming in just a matter of time, kind of like the way pound USD has been. Um, and we are below that weekly 50 MA, rejecting it time and time again. On the daily, we can see this wedge. We've broken out of this wedge, um, sort of stalling around the 50 MA, but rejecting that 71%, creating this sort of double, triple top, shooting star. Then we've had this fake out of the 50 MA. However, we've had this spin in the top. So I'm just wondering, are we going to now reverse from here um, and now come to the downside potentially? Um, so we do have these obviously level support that's formed here, um, but I do favour this short um, in some way, which obviously says is the DXY going to sort of um, come to the downside. And of course, Dollar Swiss would be looking for that short, whereas if it does continue to the upside, then we can obviously look for them pound USD short. So for me, I think the pound's a lot weaker than the dollar. So even if the dollar does get weaker, the pound will get weaker as well. On the four hour, um, we can just see the prices sort of time and time again, as we've seen, creating this counter trend line. We've broken it, we've traced the 71% and this liquidity, and now we're looking to reverse. And now we just want to see that break of the four hour 50, um, retest this previous high low, and then move to the downside. So something like this would be ideal. Um, and then maybe retest this one and then come to the downside, something like that. Um, so just looking for price to now sort of show its hand. Um, we'll just have to be patient. Of course, this one, it might have already gone. But if we can get that break of the four hour, then we look for the retracement and then we can go to the downside. And then finally, we've just got um, US dollar yen. So it looks quite clean, actually. Um, so after that sort of messy price action, we've had a nice bit of boom. It's a breakthrough, retraced, even a star off of the 50 EMA. Then we pushed the downside, made a new low. We trace to the 38.2 now with the weekly 50 MA just above. Um, weekly 50 MA just above, you can see, um, and of course just retrace that 38.2%. So now it's just looking for price to roll over. On the daily, we can just see that kind of similar. We have this obviously uh, ascending channel that was broken. We then had this very big impulse, come back up, um, form this little double top. And then we've now sort of broke below the 4 hour 50. We're now stalling on it. And now we're just looking for price to sort of go to the downside. Um, off of the 38.2, which is just above it, and then reverse to the downside. 
for our, we can just see, we did have this bearish trend line, however, price has now created this sort of rising wedge, which is in line with this area of liquidity here, which is a lower high. Um, so price has rejected this, created this shooting star, it's now come down, broken through the trend line, made a new low, however, it's now retracing and retesting the trend line here, and now we're just looking for price to break through that and then come to the downside. But of course, it's broken the rising wedge, which is a confluence. It's got rejection of this liquidity error, confluence. It hasn't made a new high, so it hasn't broken the structure. Um, and of course, it's now just sort of consolidating on that four hour 50. So now we just want to find this to break that and then um, use it as resistance and then come to the downside. So that is all the pairs of my watches. That is the watches this week. I hope that helps you guys. I hope you catch some trades. Um, if you do need anything, let me know. I finished my university exams on Wednesday. So after that, I'll be looking to make some new content. Any content you'd like to see, please put in the comments below. If not, um, let me know. Uh, hopefully we'll speak to you guys soon. If you need anything, let me know. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. So see you later um, and have a great week and catch a load of pips.